On our profile page, I've added our reusable header, and now we'll drag a text element into our main container. We'll copy and paste this element so we have two, and then we'll look at our page setup in the profile property editor. I've gone ahead and set our type of content to user, so we can only go to this page if we're sending user data over. I've also given the URL a backup field with the property of name. So in our URL, it'll append the name of the user to the address of the profile. Since the type of content is user, in our first text element, we can get the current page user's name and display it. Then we'll get the current page user's about, which is a one-line biography about that user. Once we design this, we can move this over and add an image to show the user's profile picture. We'll double click to bring up the image's property editor and set the source of the image to the current page user's profile photo. It's important to remember that we're using the current page user and not the current user, as the current user only refers to whoever is logged in. And since we're setting up a profile page to act as a template for everyone's user profile, we don't want to use the current user for any of our expressions. Now that we have these elements, we want to select them all and group them together so we can better design the page. We'll set the style of this group to a card and we'll format it just a little bit more. We want each profile page to show the recipes that that user has submitted, so we'll drag a repeating group onto the page and we'll set it up. The repeating group will be the same as the one on our index page, where we search through the database for all of our recipes. The difference is we'll be adding a constraint to this repeating group, where we constrain the search by the created by field, where created by is equal to the current page user. This will give us a list of all of the recipes that this user has submitted, which we will then sort by created date with descending of yes. Now that we have our repeating group, we can just simply drag our recipe card right into the first cell, center it, and then set the data source of it to equal the current cell's recipe. Now when we preview the page and we view a recipe, we can go to that user's profile and see all the recipes that user has submitted. Back on the profile page, we'll draw a text element in between these two, and we'll style it. We'll have the text say all recipes posted. And then in parentheses, we'll do a search in the text element to find how many recipes are in this list. We'll add the same constraint that our repeating group has, where we constrain by created by equals the current page user. Now, because this is a text box, we won't actually have the completed statement. We need to go into more in the expression because right now this is evaluating to a list and not text. So we need to go into more and get the count. So now we're searching the database for recipes submitted by this user and we're gonna return the count in this text element to give anyone viewing this profile a quick glance of how many recipes this user has posted. Now when we view the page, we can see how many recipes this user has. The final thing we're going to add to our profile is a button, which we'll draw in our main card over here, and we'll call it Edit Profile. We'll add a conditional to this button that says, when the current user's name is the current page user's name, this element is visible. Then we'll turn off the initial visibility on the Edit Profile button. Finally, we'll start a workflow on this button using the Go to Page action with the destination of Settings. And now our profile page is complete. In the next lesson, we're going to program the settings page, finalizing all the pages in our application.